In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the built-in Studio and Player ActionScript 3 compiler to develop your own scripted functions so you can create a fully customized digital signage presentation. The ActionScript 3 compiler supports all of the import libraries so you can take advantage of standard commands like timers and dates and events. We also provide an instance of player event service that is used to both listen to events as well as to get the data from remote servers using wget. Calling functions directly from the campaign is also supported, so I'll demonstrate that, including the ability to act upon the functions only if they return a true value. I do recommend that after this video tutorial, you watch the triggers and events video tutorial as it's closely related to the capabilities that are exposed via scripting. Scripting is part of the Enterprise Edition, so you do need to subscribe to receive this functionality. Once you do, log into your Enterprise account and make sure you enable the scripting functions right here. The first thing you want to do in the Sonic Studio is enable the script functionality under navigation. So let's go ahead and add a brand new script and we'll just call it our script1. Go ahead and make some room here. Go ahead and maybe add a function. Call this function f1 and just log hello world to the console. We'll go ahead and call this function and we'll actually pass in a param maybe we'll pass in world just show you that we can actually pass in values compile the script we can see that the build succeeded so we called the f1 function passing it the string world hello world was printed to the console because we have the log function over here and it returned a true so it's printing the true over here so everything works as described it's really neat that we can develop functions, but how do we actually execute these functions? So let's switch back to our campaign. And there's different places that you can actually call functions. So the first place would be under the campaign properties. You go to the script option. You will need to first bind the script to this campaign. So we'll select script one. Next, we'll switch to events. And again, events. Add a new event. Over here, we need to type in the event name. And again, I do recommend that you watch the events video tutorial if you're not familiar with events. So we'll just type event one. And over here, we can actually call a function. So at this point, we'll have to just enter F1. This will be the name of the function that we want to call because it's the function that we've developed earlier. And so what's going to happen is if this function F1 returns a true, which it is in this case, whatever happens next over here, the command, regardless if it's select timeline, resume presentation, post URL, will execute. However, if it actually returns a false, this command would not execute. So essentially what you can do is under your script, you can put conditions. So over here, I've modified function f1, and this time, if the value that I pass in is world, then I print hello world and I return true. However, if I pass any other string, it's going to return a false. So let's go ahead and compile this. Next, call this with world. And you can see the return true. And I'm going to go world2. And now it's returning false. So you can put conditions over here in your scripting and act upon these conditions wherever you assign the function. So once you assign a script to a particular campaign, as I showed you earlier, and map events, you can essentially call the functions. But one thing that may not be apparent right away is that although you are mapping events to functions at the level of the campaign, you can trigger events from anywhere. So for example, if we double click on this resource over here and we can go over here to the properties under definition, you can say that anytime this Swift resource is clicked, we're going to send an event. Or for example, anytime this resource starts playing, we're going to send an event. Or when this particular resource stops playing, which in this case will happen after 20 seconds, we're going to send an event. And then this particular event, for example, event one, will be fired as soon as this resource starts playing. It will be caught by our mapping at the campaign level. Right over here, we're going to catch event one and therefore call function one. So although you're doing the mapping between events and function names only at the level of the campaign, you can fire the events or trigger the events from many places. And again, if you watch the video tutorial for triggers and events, as I mentioned earlier, you'll see just from where you can fire events. You, you can even fire events using a curl command outside the Siren Studio. So again, if you did that, it will be caught through this mapping right here, call the function, and essentially just call your script. 
Next, I pasted in a little bit more elaborate script to show you just some of the functionality and the capabilities. You can see that the first thing we're doing is, is we're importing some flash libraries using the import command. So of course you can just go through the online documentation and import whatever flash libraries or action script three libraries that you want to use. We'll first start setting the date using the start time. So this is just an object creating a new instance of it, setting a timer for every one second. And for every one second, we're going to call on timer and then on timer basically just needs the start command and on timer will just show the current date and time and we'll also send an event called ev1 with no value now is basically just a value of nothing so we are going to let's go ahead and change this to be event one so it's in par with everything that we've done so far so now instead of sending an event from a click or when a particular resource starts playing on the timeline as I showed you, we can actually fire event using the scripting language. So this is very powerful. You can, for example, listen for things outside the Sunny Studio and then when they occur, you can fire events and act upon these events in the signage player. So right now we're basically just are saying again that every one second we're going to fire this event called event one. Now if you watch the video tutorial for triggers and events, you'll see that over there we talk about the label and the label actually has a set param so we can pass values to it. So if we didn't put null here, we actually put some value, we could pass this value into our label. So you can grab information from the outside world using WKit, which I'll show you in just a second, and then you can pass this value into particular labels, you can pre-process the information, pretty much do anything you want with scripting. Go ahead and set this back the way it was. Let's go ahead and compile and run this. And you can see that we are having this date and time being displayed every one second for a total of 10 seconds. Let's go ahead and scroll down and you see that we have two functions, function one and function two. Function one, just like before, will first set the current time and within the four seconds, it will actually reply with a true, but then we'll reply with a false. So let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to set this to run function one. We don't actually need to pass any value to it right now. Compile and then run, 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 run. You see that it keeps on returning true. For about four seconds, it returned true. Actually, for exactly four seconds, it returned true. And then it actually started returning false. So because we said this, as long as duration is less than four, returns true. Again, if I scroll up a little bit here, you can see that it's returning true for the first four seconds. Also displaying the time, 2.6 seconds, three seconds, three and a half seconds. And then as soon as we pass four seconds, it returns a false. So you can see that when we call function two, we are going to pass a value to it. This value will actually be passed to an external web server. Here's the address of the web server. And as soon as the value comes back from the web server, we are going to display it. We're going to call wget over here on wget. So again, this function on wget is going to be called when the server replies and we're going to log the message. So if you're going to call function two, pass just some data to the remote server, click on run. And you can see that we got this, this is a file or this is a test file from the remote server. And it keeps on replying every time I click. And over here on the bottom, we just demonstrated that we can also call a function right away. So when I compile this, you see that right away we get this is a text file because we are manually calling F2 as soon as the script runs. So this is useful if you wanted to create some initialization variables or just wanted to pretty much do anything as far as scripting is concerned when the campaign that this script is assigned to kicks off. So let's go ahead and summarize really quick what you've learned and give you a few examples. So scripts are assigned to one or more campaigns and you map the events to functions at the campaign level. When an event is caught, the function will be called just as I showed you. You can pass values to functions and return true or false. If the function returns true, the command will execute. And to give you some examples of how scripting can be integrated, wget values can pull Internet of Things devices like Vera or Arduino if a value, let's say of a light bulb, is over a certain threshold value, we can fire an event. We can post data to external web servers if a certain condition is met. We can pull external web servers and change the presentation accordingly. You can create a custom scheduler using the on timer function I showed you. And you can also create a custom proof of play to post data to remote web servers. And of course, these are just a few examples. Everyone will have their own needs and hopefully the scripting can accommodate that. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and thanks for watching.